my god. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I just finished watching The Last of Us Episode 9. It was the final episode of the season, and... I have a mixed bag of emotions, all positive, to be completely honest with you. There's a couple of things I want to talk about, and yes, I am completely out of my element. I'm in the process of moving, so I'm standing making a video because my desk doesn't have a chair. So, yeah, this is weird for me, but that's fine. We're going to make it work. Guys, that episode was, okay, first off, ripped straight, straight straight out of the game. Like, one for one, everything about it. Obviously, some parts were a little different for the TV medium, but it literally felt like we were playing the game. Even the montage of Joel walking through and just, you know, doing what he did, which we're going to get to in a minute, even that just felt ripped straight from the game. But my god, this episode did such a good job, unlike the game, of making the decision that Joel made very transparent that it was the wrong decision. And even in the game, you got a little bit of that, but it really felt more prevalent here. And we're going to get into all that in a second. But I wanted to start by running through the episode you know, overall. So when we start out in the episode, you see a flashback of Ellie's mom giving birth to Ellie in the most, what I gotta say is like the worst circumstance ever. Who would want to be fighting off an infected person as you're literally about to give birth? Like, absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy to see that. And then Marlene was there and all that stuff. At first, I didn't really like how they cut to the, you know, they cut to the intro before they showed what happened to Ellie, because I was like, wait, is that it? Like, what happens to Ellie? And then we saw what happened and it worked itself out, which was great and all of that. But that's how we started the episode. And then we picked up literally like right what the game does. We get what is <laughs> straight from the game, and I couldn't believe we did get it. We got the giraffe scene. The giraffe scene was a really big moment in the show that a lot of people point, or in, in the game that a lot of people point to, and people were wondering how they were going to do it for the show, and so was I, and they did it perfectly. Yeah, obviously the CG, uh, the CGI giraffe looked a little bit like CGI, but who cares? Like, who's counting? Really, it was awesome to get that. I never thought we were going to get that for the TV medium, <laughs> to be completely honest with you, and then everything that ensued after that was literally just a carbon copy of the game. And that's not a bad thing. You know, some, obviously, some adaptations try to do that. There's, like, you know, the Halo show and all of those other shows, Resident Evils and all that. Some of them rip moments straight from the games and things like that. But this one did it, like, right. It ripped it from the game, but it made it feel like you were watching a TV show, but it made it feel like you were also playing a game. It was, it's hard to explain, but it worked so well here. And specifically, the point of that is the montage that I'm going to get to in a minute. But what I did like about this episode, and from here on out, this episode was really short. So I'm going to jump kind of, like, right into spoilers, because it happened what felt like really early on in the episode. And I guess if I do have one complaint, it is that. And we're going to get to the complaints at the end, because I do have two. I'm going to make a whole separate video about The Last of Us as a series this first season, but we get right into the whole Joel waking up in the hospital and Marlene telling Joel that they essentially have to kill Ellie in order to save, but they have a cure. They know what the cure is, and they really did a good job of setting it up and making it understandable that there is a clear path forward. I was really worried how they were going to do that in the show's version, how they were going to, like, explain what happens and, like, how they could get Ellie to be the cure and all that stuff. I was worried that they were going to kind of, like, mess that up and fumble it, but they didn't here. They explained it clear as day. Joel understood that, and then when he finally understood, oh wait, but that's going to kill Ellie in the process, then it was really like, oh, who's the asshole now? And that's what I really, really enjoyed about this, because the decision for Joel to go back and do what he did with that amazing, amazing montage of him walking through the hospital, killing everyone, it was a clear and conscious decision. And I love that they did it that way. He knew it was a bad decision. But he still went with it anyway. And I love that. I love that in this show version, they made it clear. Because I'm not going to explain what happens in Last of Us Part 2. But if you know, you know. And when it happened in the game, it kind of felt very stark. Even though the same decision was made in the game, it didn't feel as, I guess, justifiable is the term I could say. But going through this episode, it really made me realize... 
eh, Joe, Joe has it coming. Like, he's got it coming. It's gonna, like, you know what I mean? It just, they set it up really well here, kind of like just shaking your hands on a deal. You knew what you were gonna get. You knew when you made that decision, you were going to eventually see the ramifications of that decision. I love that they made that clear as day. And then, I've been talking about it the whole video, you get that amazing, amazing montage of Joel going through the hospital, killing people. And the same thing holds true here as it did with Everything else I've talked about, really, from The Last of Us, they cut away from all the violent moments, but here, you know, you got to see some a little bit, sure, but they made it blatantly obvious when they cut away from every person Joel killed or even Marlene killed that they, they didn't show it, which was a little annoying for a show that is that supposed to be as gritty and cold as this, but whatever. I'm not going to talk about that too much in this video. I'm going to save that for the series review, or at least season one review. But yeah, that montage was just incredible, and it felt like you were in a video game, like it literally felt like you were in the action, you were playing Joel, and you were going through the hospital, and I never played this scene like I've talked about in my other reviews. I've never played the game fully, I've watched it on my friend's couch. This episode makes me want to go back and just play this scene, because this must have been so much fun to do. Like, it must have been absolutely awesome. But anyway... Eventually, he gets to the surgery room on the pediatrician's floor, the whatever you call pediatric floor, or whatever, and it was literally exactly, exactly the same as the game. Like, one for one. Same thing. He, you know, the, the doctor comes in, he's like, oh, I'm not gonna let you take her. The whole thing was exactly the same, and that's okay. It works so freaking well. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I think that's the best thing about this episode, is it wasn't broken from the game. But they just enhanced it in the show, and they made some of the more controversial parts, which are Joel's decision, because there's so many video essays out there online talking about Joel's decision and what he did. I think what this episode did really well that was a little different from the game, and mind you, I don't remember every little detail of the game's cutscenes, because I wasn't fully pre present when my friend was playing it the whole time, you know what I mean? So... The one thing I could tell you, based off of seeing what I saw there and what I've seen here, that they've done a much better job of, is making that decision clear as day. And I said this already, this isn't new, but you can now look at Joel and be like, asshole, asshole. Like, you know what those kids chant at, like, games and things like that? Like, I'm looking at Joel now like, okay, yep, you, you get it. You, you deserve whatever's coming to you. And I think that perfectly perfectly, perfectly sets up the next season. And I even like, and I said I'm going to come back to it, and I will, this episode was really short, but I even, I loved how this episode showed you that Ellie does not believe Joel. When he woke up, or when she woke up, I should say, and he explained that story, which even made me more asshole, 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 but when she heard the story from him. You could tell she didn't believe it at the beginning at all. She didn't believe it. And then when they had that conversation on the hike, which was one of the most beautiful shots of the show, by the way, just absolutely fantastic, which it was different scenery than the game, but that's fine. But it was better scenery in the show. Um, but when she finally asks Joel to swear that that was the reason that they had to leave uh, the Firefly camp and all of that stuff. You could see in her eyes that she was sussing him out and she didn't believe him even though they just agreed that that was what happened. So it perfectly, perfectly sets up the next season. It didn't leave on any sort of cliffhangers. It was so faithful to the game, and I loved that. I didn't think this episode needed fixing, so when they actually addressed everything in this episode, they just did it so well. They really did. Um, I, there's nothing but really good things to say about it. The only two bad things I will say, one is mainly for the uh, season review, but I'll, I'll say it anyway in this video because it is relevant. They still, I feel like, this season just moved a little too quickly. To get from the beginning of the story to where we are with this episode and this huge decision that was made, I really do feel like they needed more time to develop Ellie and Joel together. I mean, obviously, as gamers, we understand the relationship because if you've played the game, you've played 15 plus hours worth 
of time with them, and it's not all cutscenes in the game. There's actual gameplay, too, of Joel and Ellie, and there's dialogue in those gameplay scenes. So you get more time with them, and you understand that going in. You understand their dynamic. If you've seen, the, if you've played the game, you know what it is in the story, so you don't really need that time for development. But for new viewers, kind of like myself, even though I've watched it and stuff like that, I would have liked a little bit more time to make it feel believable. Like, I, I always go back to the fact that if I wasn't watching this as someone who knows what happens, I don't know how I, I would feel. And I feel like, now as I'm thinking about it, I know I said I don't know, but as I'm thinking about it more and more, I feel like this episode perfectly summed up that it moved a little bit too quickly. If I was a new viewer, I would have thought this was a little unbelievable. But then you also got to remember simultaneously that they did travel across the country together, and we only saw snippets of those in the show, if that makes any sense. So, like, you understand that their relationship obviously had to develop over the span of what I'm sure it took a month or however long for them to get to point A and point B. I know it's like two weeks to get across the country, but you know, with all their stops and stuff like that, it took a lot longer. So yeah, that was, that would be my only complaint if I wasn't a, um, if I wasn't a viewer of the game or anything like that. And also the other thing that I wasn't a fan of in this episode was the runtime. I was hoping that they would make this extended, but they didn't. And that absolutely attributes to how I feel like this was rushed a little bit. This was 45 minutes on the dot, like literally 45 minutes, which fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but you have an extended episode in episodes one and two and then you leave one of the biggest moments in the story to just a 45 minute runtime that was like, do this, 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 and we're done. Felt a little too quick. It really did. It felt a little too quick. That being said, though, I'm still okay with how they did it because I really liked what they did, but it needed a little bit more time to breathe. I said this about The Walking Dead Season 11. Season 11 of The Walking Dead could have used, like, eight more episodes for it to be a fully believable last season. I feel like this show needed either, either an extended run for this episode or ten episodes to make a little bit more breathing room for the story to develop and for Joel and Ellie to develop. And they had great camaraderie on screen. Like, their chemistry was great throughout all of it. But I feel like they just needed a little bit more time that we, we, we just missed. We just straight up missed. And that is disappointing. But overall, this episode was just fantastic. It really was. It was done so well, just straight from the game. You didn't need to do much else because it wasn't broken. It sets a great, 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 great tone for the next season. And for us, Game people who have seen it or know what happens, you know what's coming. And <laughs> oh, I'm excited for that. But yeah, this has been my review of episode 9. Let me know how you liked the episode. I'd love to hear about it down below in the comments. And with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching this video. And until the next one, I'll talk to you later. Peace out.